Hey everybody, welcome back in today's community conversation. El Paso Police Sergeant Robert Gomez here with us this morning. Once again, he's going to be here every Wednesday. And today we're actually talking about animal cruelty because it's Animal Cruelty Prevention Month. Yeah, so last week we had animal services in the studio to talk about how they work with the department to try and bring the number of cases down. Can you talk to us a little bit about how big of a problem this is here in our area? Well, it is a it is a problem in our area, um, and the, the investigative unit it works hand in hand with animal services, like you said. And basically, what the the unit does is investigate those claims of animal cruelty that the animal services or the public identify. And so, what comes with an animal cruelty charge? Can people face jail time? Yes, absolutely. Animal cruelty can range from misdemeanors to felonies. Uh, it, it involves uh, livestock, as far as the livestock and the domestic animals. Uh, so the, the penalties can be severe. And then Animal Services was on our show last Wednesday, and they were talking to us a little bit about abuse, and they said that it can't just be physical abuse. Obviously, that is something that is very harmful to your pet, but another form of abuse could be something like not giving your f dog food, not giving your animal water. Can you talk a little bit about that and just how seriously you guys take this and how people can file a report? If, basically, if they see something, you want them to say something. Yes, it, it's not just physical abuse, uh, failure to provide uh, adequate shelter, especially uh, these coming months when it's really hot outside. Uh, pets that are outside need to have you know, proper shelter from the sun, uh, food, water, and uh, you know, proper care. Um, this is something that the public, if they do witness it, the, the best thing to do is to call 311. That'll initiate uh, animal services and they will, they will start the claim, and should they find that it is animal cruelty, they will refer it to the department. But Animal Services is the first step in any of these investigations. Animal Services was also talking about a dog fighting as part of like these charges. Is that an issue here in El Paso? Uh, that I'm aware of, not in recent years. Or it is illegal in Texas. Dog fighting uh, is also a specific charge in the penal code. Um, that I'm aware of, we don't have a significant problem. In fact, I can't think of a case in recent years, but it is illegal in Texas. And then could you talk to us a little bit about, is there a specific case that maybe comes to mind when you think about animal cruelty, something that you've seen and witnessed the department investigate? You know, one case that does come to mind, and it's actually a, a, a happy ending to this case, uh, a social media site uh, reported of a or showed a video of a person that, you know, it looked like he was abandoning his dog in the desert. Uh, the animal cruelty unit investigated, um, and then through their investigation, found the owner, found the dog, found out that the circumstances weren't what appeared in the video, and uh, it turned out to be a, a, a good ending to a happy pet owner and a happy, responsible pet owner. So that's one of the things that I do recall. Absolutely, and I guess could you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Maybe social media can be deceiving sometimes and misleading, and just how important it is for an investigation to be done um, completely before determination is made. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, videos and, and social on social media only show a very specific clip of any situation, and usually lacks content context. And that's what investigations are for, to put the pieces together and give uh, the public and the, the court system a full picture of what happened. All right, Sergeant Gomez, thank you. And he's not going anywhere just yet. We're going to keep him here with us a little bit longer. In the next segment of our show, we're going to talk here from viewers. And he's going to answer some questions about from them about what they want to hear. Yeah, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. All right, everybody, welcome back. Your time now, 827. Well, I would say it's been probably about two months now that we've had you, Sergeant Gomez, yeah. here on our morning show, answering questions directly from viewers on Facebook. If you're watching this at home right now, on Mondays every week, we post a viewer prompt that we ask you guys, is there any questions you have for the El Paso Police Department? And then we pull some of those, and Sergeant Gomez is here every Wednesday to answer them for us. Thank you so much. Yeah, so we'll get straight to it for these morning's questions. And the first one is from Manu. Manuel Irene Ruiz, and they're asking, do we here in El Paso have any squatter laws in place to protect our properties? If not, what needs to be done to get one? So in Texas, there are uh, squatter laws. Um, I don't know what the viewers asking specifically, but squatter and criminal trespass kind of get intermixed. Uh, the difference being is squatters are intending to take ownership of the property, usually open 
uh, in public, and criminal trespass is something that's different, that's usually secretive, uh, and their intent is temporary and not to take ownership. But Texas does have laws against them. Okay. Yeah, and moving on to our next question now, let's take a look. This question from Jonathan Gulliman, and he's asking, how can a person not be hired by the police because of an arrest, but allowed to continue to work for the police after an arrest? Okay, well, our, our hiring process is very comprehensive and it comes with the background, the background check. Um, if arrests are prior, that could be something that a department decides that is, is not an, an adequate candidate or a a candidate that we would want to take. Now, once, a, once you are a police officer, if you are arrested, um, we have the same process and do, rights to due process as everyone else. Uh, arrest doesn't necessarily uh, mean um, a person is guilty with the presumption of innocence. So that process has to go through. But uh, once that process has gone through, uh, police officers can be disciplined uh, for various things to include dismissal. So it, it just depends on, on, the, on the situation. Okay, the third question is from Cheryl Ann, and she's asking, why do they ask where you're coming from and where you are headed to during a traffic stop? Well, every traffic stop is, is different, and every traffic stop is unique. I think uh, on TV shows, it's, it's very prevalent to where you're coming from, uh, but usually the way traffic stops work, they're specific to why you're being stopped. Mm -hmm. um, for, for example, if it's just for speeding, we'll introduce ourselves, tell you the reason for the stop, and then ask you for license and registration. If it's an investigative stop, for some of the reasons, we might go into those types of questions, but um, it, it just depends on, on the stop. It's not something that's blanket across the board. And if you choose not to answer, that's okay too. And this next question from Ray Morales, he's asking about cold cases. Let's take a look at that one. He says, why are cold crimes never reopened and fully investigated? Does the EPPD, the El Paso Police Department, have any education or training on these matters? Yes, uh, the El Paso Police Department does have a cold case unit. Um, we do look for, uh, we do continue to investigate cases that are deemed cold. A lot of those cases are the ones that have uh, unlimited statutes of limitations like murder, sex assault. Usually those cases, what they do or the way they're investigated is they're crimes that um, you can investigate once new technology comes uh, or evidence can, can be added, so such as DNA or another technique that wasn't available when the crime was committed. And these crimes are investigated until they're solved. Uh, the cold case status allows cases to be continually investigated as uh, the case develops. Okay. All right, Sergeant, thank you so much. Did you have anything Yeah, I actually today? wanted to ask, is there a way for people, so if someone wants to look up a cold case, is there any like database um, that they can look it up to where they can, if they're curious about a cold case? There, there's not a database where they can look up a, a cold case, but if you know of a, a, you know, a high profile case or, or definitely a murder, a homicide, something like that, um, we can definitely get you in contact with a detective that's handling that. Awesome, Sergeant. Thank you so much. And like I said earlier, he's been here for probably about two months every yeah. week now. If you wanted to recap some of the other questions that he's answered on our past community conversations, you can do so on our website at kfoxtv.com. And again, don't forget to ask those questions on Facebook and we'll answer them here in our newscast. Now we're going to take a look at traffic. Diana.